All right. Beckman Unleashed, podcast number 20. We are live. I'm not tired because I'm drinking a drink, an uh, energy drink. But, bro, I did three feisty Fidos today. Nice. It, it's too much. And you, like, flew in here late. But an hour late. But three feisty Fidos okay. is insane with these dogs. Three hours of feisty dogs and folks, clients. And like trying to manage and fix these dogs and uh, I'm, I'm is really a rough thing. I got to look at not doing as many of these. I thought you were going it, to it, it, slow it down on podcast day. Oh, really? Was that the plan? That's what I heard. Well, I didn't do it. Yeah. Three feisty fidos and now this podcast. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I just shouldn't be, I shouldn't be doing this. What's a feisty fido for those who don't know? It's an aggressive dog. Now, one of them was not aggressive. So I gave her a discount, but... Generally, they're aggressive. It's it's a lot on the nervous system. For you, right? Yeah, it's tough. So we also have a special Prince did guest. not even come out for one of them. So everyone who Prince needs, you know, a, a vacation people, uh, he doesn't do all these sessions. He didn't even come out for one of them because it was people feistiness. Our special guest, we have our second special guest. Oh, First one excited, bro. was Dog Daddy. Second one is Princey. And he is, oh. you thought I was going to say something else. Well, we, we have, have another one coming. We have another one, but it has to be a secret because it's just Yeah, I know. I'm, that's why I thought you were going to tell no, everybody. No, I wouldn't do that. But uh, can we call Princey up here real quick? Yeah, say his name. Princey, come on, boy. Come on. Yeah. There he is. Ah, there There's he is. the man. Here, look at the camera. Princey boy. Prince, you got to come over here. Here, over here. Look. Come on, you're on stage, man. There. You're on. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, that's a good boy. boy. Oh, he's the best. Boy. That's a good boy. You want to you wanna say something? Prince. Can you bark? No, we don't even want him to bark. He's going to lick that light. There he is. Super All right. There's Prince. Prince. Like, there's okay, Prince. go lay down, boy. You talk to him like my six-year-old. I know. Exactly. That's what my six-year-old does. That's what I talk. He goes, oh, hi, Princey boy. Oh, go lay down, boy. We learned it from you listening to you. You must have. Just both go, of you. Princey. Oh, Princey. That's how you say it. Oh, he's back. Okay. Oh, he's cruising by. Bro. Can you, you control can your dog, he's sir? He's going lie down over here in the corner. He wants to be by you. I was thinking about putting by me. the um, Kirkland brand, uh, what is it, dog dog bed, bringing it closer, oh. but then you Oh, that bed? Me. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, you can bring it closer. He just cruises. He's in he's the corner. Gonna, yeah, he's just going to hang by you. He's tired. He loves you. I'm tired. We're a team. Yeah, you are. So I did these three feisties and it's just, it's, it's rough, man. I'm just trying to be real and be honest on here. How did you get any good footage from those? Yeah. Yeah. One dog, like one after another dog. One, I thought the dog was going to bite me. What were the breeds of the dogs? Australian, uh, 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 Australian shepherd. Oh my God. I don't know, bro. Who was the most aggressive? Dog? I barely remember. It's like a big blur. It's all big blur. They come right after. Was there a dog. big, nasty looking? No, dog? I know you want that for videos. Yeah. None of them were big and nasty. A shame. Um, uh, I I literally I have to think. I'm talking. I'm on a podcast. Like my brain isn't. I can't just stop talking and sit yeah. here and think. So we did basically jump right into the podcast when you got here. We got Princey Boy in. Yeah. And then um, now I'm always going to think of your son when I say Princey Boy. Yeah, my six year old. But here here's what I want to say. Like with one of the clients. I was looking at him. Their dog is super controlling and I'm talking to him and they're this couple and they have, um, it was like a, like a kind of a gnarly, um, um, like medium sized, uh, like mixed breed dog. And I'm talking to him and I'm, I'm, I'm like, you guys have to take control of this situation. Like, you you have to you have to be the boss in the house. It can solve so many problems, and pe there are some people that are so incapable of doing it that it it's over fifteen years. I was really really patient with my clients for like fourteen years, like really patient. And I'm there's a threshold that's been hit where I'm I'm kind of getting really over it, and it's it's like frustrating me a little bit that it's just the same thing over and over again. They never have children. It's Groundhog Day. Okay. The, the, the people never have children. Why? We can get into why. 
Why do the people who let their dog get away with everything never have children? It's because they've never rehearsed. Like, knock it off. If you have kids, there's moments where you're like, knock it off. There are people who who cannot say knock it off to their dog. Like, they don't have it in them to go, hey, get over there and knock this nonsense off. True. It's like you need a granny. Grannies used to do that and grandfathers too. So they the, would let to, you know. So grandkids, yeah. yeah. And so I'm, I'm just like... Like I had a class <clears throat> little horse today, my friend. Dude, I had a class years ago. Um, and it was like when computers first came out and the college guy was like, people will come in and say, yeah, my computer just didn't, you know, I couldn't type this out. And he's like, you control your computer. Like the computer yeah. operates with functions. Like you learn to control your computer. I'm not accepting my computer. It was like 2001. Mm -hmm. 2000 like computers weren't just out but like yeah. people are still having issues with word and how to yeah. use word and he's like this is not an excuse like yeah. if your dog if you rescue a problem dog i get you need help i i get it if you raise your dog and it slowly starts getting worse and then it eventually bites somebody like that's not an excuse it's like at four months old fix the dog and at six months old if it keeps doing you 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 go a little harder and yeah. treats are never the problem it's not it's never a i tr you you didn't treat your dog give your dog enough hot dogs it's yeah. never that it's the opposite of that and i'm i'm actually getting kind of a visceral reaction yeah i'm i'm like getting a little over it i'm not mad at my clients i'm i'm not i i i'm not and if they're they're in the office with me i'm not mad at them and i i but on he, I guess I am mad at him. It's good for business, my friend. To be mad at him? No. Oh, that's not good for business. <laughs> no, for them to not know what to do and to come see you. Yeah, and it's going to never stop. But um, um, I don't know. I, I'm trying to help people. In my this. in my line of work, we call that user error. Oh, that's yeah, called. that's exactly right. It's like, oh, yeah, the Word document didn't save. It's like, yeah, you didn't save it <laughs> is what happened. Yeah. So don't blame the, the the word. Don't blame Microsoft. Now, there's a lot to blame Microsoft for, but that's not one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I get comp dog training is more complex than Word documents. Maybe not as complex as Excel, which I, I do not understand. And I, you understand. And I think you're a magician when you bust it out and you do something. Let's say it's more like Excel. What a weird, um, was that a metaphor? Simile? Oh, something like that. I don't know. That's interesting though, because I like to say this and you would say this is the same thing with dog training where people will go, oh, you're really good with Excel. And I will go, I'm not good at Excel. I'm better than 99.5% hmm. of the population at Excel. And yet I'm not very good at it because You've I've seen, seen someone that's great at it. I've worked with a lot of people that are like, it's like coding the level oh. of how good they are at it. And then not just that, like almost everything I learn, I have to redo. Like if I remember something. You forget it. Yeah, like, That's oh, true. I did this in 2013. Let me try this again. Oh, and then I have to relearn it. It's a pain in the. It seems like magic to me. And I know it's not, but like, it seems crazy. Excel seems crazy to me. But it's similar. You know, you think it's similar to dog training that that you could be. See, you're not 99.5% good at dog training, though. You are 99.999. I think there's I about five folks in america that i could really there's some trust. dude on a mountain in colorado and a dude in the alps well yeah and a dude in the, uh, some dude riding around uh with a falcon in mongolia with a freaking wolf next to him like they may be better no the men in, but the men in dagestan they know how to train dogs this yeah. is, they don't have trouble with this yeah 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 allies. there's people out there better than me but um they're not hot dogs. there's not yet. many on youtube no but there are some there's a few solid ones yeah yeah. Who knows? Maybe they'll join us one day. Maybe they'll be here in a month. You don't, don't know. know. Who knows? How would you know? Uh, that's fun. Too bad all the people that are listening to this through the audio version through our podcast system that we have don't get to see Prince today. Oh, I guess yeah. they could go pop on. Well, to, they've seen them. They've seen YouTube. them. But it's fun to see them in the so, studio. Yeah, I don't want to. I just want to wrap up my, I don't know, my uh, frustration. So I have an idea if you're done, because I want to jump into a so, Google voicemail. Okay, but let me let me just wrap this up. You know, you guys take they take control of your of your dog and 
this is not a parent podcast. This is not a how to be a better employer podcast. This is not um, how to be um, a better parent, like I just said. But there is a level of you run the house and you're not accepting nonsense that you have to up your game, general population. You have to up your game. It's it's why your dog is having problems. Is you're too soft. You got to you got to be the boss. After the session today, I looked at my employees and I was like, I'm not like I am with you guys with dogs because that wouldn't be a good thing. But like like I don't know. I was like people need to up their game on on the dog stuff. I say we tease this out a minute for a minute because this is actually really interesting to me. And I read not only comments, we have some really good comments on our podcast, but yeah, other channels. And then I see the conflicting dog training opinions and then kind of the conflicting parenting advice. And I had just went through that because there's like a gentle parenting movement, more or less. Uh, uh yeah, which is taking over the zeitgeist, I think you call it. And so I do wonder, you know, you said they don't have kids. And yeah, I, I, I've learned so much from my oldest daughter, which I've raised for 15 years. Yeah. And then obviously I'm learning again, but I believe more what I believed before doing it two and three times. I'm more convinced yeah. that this way is uh me what is it miyamoto masashi the great samurai guy no said, idea said when you know the way oh yeah broadly you will you see it this. in all things yeah yeah and you we're do. seeing it in dog training and parenting yeah yeah I, um i think that the uh i mean i guess it's the same dog training and parent i mean it's similar obviously but so like there was a sorry to interrupt you there was a what was it a comment but essentially my old manager slash mentor told me that and i've sent, said this on the podcast i believe they will do talking about your workers they will do what you put up with and yes. it seems like that works with almost everything in life yes you've told me that and you are good at remembering he remembers all you remember all your managers and like the wise ones and you you talked to me about the good guys guy who came in and just told all the employees like yeah. can can we talk about this they oh, were like stealing that. stuff or something yeah. and the new manager came in and he's like i will i will freaking call the cops on you and like this ends today and he laid down the law and he was like a great manager for you you also told me when you were a manager of a location you, you're like, you would let the people, like if they're on their phones, right? You, you'd kind of let it go. Mm -hmm. But then if they slipped up, you then go, okay, we can, we can take the phone privileges away. Like I'm letting you do this when I'm, probably I shouldn't, but like now you messed up and now there's consequences, but I'm going to let you do it until I'm not going to let you do it. And you, you're the one who screwed up. Yeah. So now we're taking it away. And that is all. I would say, Yes, the parenting thing. I would say the employer thing is almost more dog training. It's very, it's very way. similar because I don't want them to not be able to use their phones. And I don't do this anymore. But when I did, yeah, go ahead, use your phone. But when that customer shows up, you better greet them, be genuine and nice with them, talk with them. Definitely shouldn't be on your phone when you're talking to a customer. Yeah, yeah. And then make sure all of your work is handled. And then, yeah. you know. And if it's not. Yeah, then, we can take these phone privileges away. Yeah, and then, but I can be that guy if you want, but I don't want to. I want us to have fun, and yeah. I want us to. And no one likes to be micromanaged, but don't make me micromanage you. You know, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, but I love this guy who you're talking about. Not only the he, good guys, he, yeah, good guys. He was a good man, and also we went from one of the worst stores in San Diego to the best store, and it wasn't an accident that they put him in there and that happened. Yeah, but to add to your thing, he said, "I have sent thieves." in a way in cop cars with their children and wives crying for yeah, them. That's what he said to the whole staff, right? Yeah. And he wasn't kidding. And, uh, yeah. but it was that, it was that mercy that like, if you've done something wrong, if you've stolen from this company, that's okay. Everything starts today. Yeah. But you do it to me and you're, I'll burn it down. Yeah. You know, I yeah. love that. It's a little bit of both. Like, I'm not going to catch who did it. 
I don't care. Yeah. It starts today. I'll, yeah. You know. And I think that's a little bit like when I take a leash, I'll look at the, I'm, I'm, I know I said it in the last podcast and commenters talked about it. Like I am a little much. I really am. Cares. I'll take the leash from people and at that, and I'll look at them and I'll be like, I didn't start this fight. And I'll like, start like yelling at the client, like not yelling at him, but like I get really worked up because mm -hmm. I'm trying to explain like, your dog is doing this not because it's scared not because it was a rescue your dog's attacking dogs because it feels like attacking dogs because it does what it wants because it does whatever the hell it wants and it happens to want to to thrash another dog or to control another dog or to submit with their mouth over their neck another dog at the other dog's house whether it's prince or one of my board and trains or whatever that's what they want to do. Well, we're, th those days are over. They are never happening again on my watch. It's over. This dog's life is over in that way. Over. And we will never take that behavior again or anything leading up to that behavior. It is done, right? It is done. I will. It's a principled approach, my friend. Yeah. It's the difference is, and you don't want to be so extreme. But you find like it's you can't waffle. You have to be. I had another manager. I forgot the term that he used because uh, I kind of wasn't selling what he wanted me to sell. And he said, you better sell this with conviction. And I thought, what a great word. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes, sir. Happy to do that for you. Conviction. But yeah. you you bring that conviction to dog training. But I think it helps to teach people because then if you, if you spend time, like some of these academic folks that don't actually work with dogs, then they're so confused because they don't know what to do. Whereas like you show people, grab the leash, be the boss, do these things. And yeah. you give clear cut directions on how to change the dog's life. Yeah. Well, right? thank you. I mean, that's what I, that's what I try to do. And I try to, 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 um, to send a message that day that then the, the people and the dog go home with and then the dog is hopefully a little bit different and then the people learn enough to kind of keep the dog different if mm -hmm. that makes sense but you have to make a decision that that the days that the days of that dog doing that are over can you repeat the caesar milan quote about rehabilitating people what does he say i i train dogs no i train people i rehabilitate dogs yeah i think that's right yeah it's so true though because you need to help in some sense you need to help the owner more than the dog because once he leaves your or she leaves your facility you're done that dog can only get so much better yeah right yeah so that's where if you don't empower that client to take over yeah get the tools and the attitude and the attitude i think long, lasts longer than the fixes yeah yeah, the attitude's important. They got to be over it. They got to be over the behavior. And it's my job to get them over the behavior. And it's my job to to bring them up. There are people who just can't get to a level. Yeah. That's why that's the no kids thing. Mm -hmm. If you've had kids, you've gotten frustrated with your kids and you've gotten mad. Never. There, You don't need to get angry. You need to get serious though mm -hmm. with your dog. Yeah. And dogs... Dogs can't hear, they, 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 they're not going to understand a lot of words. You can't sit them down and go, listen, you can't attack dogs. You have to let them know. You have to grab them. They have to go, oh, that lady's strong. Like, why would a dog know you're strong? I'll tell you why they care if you're strong. That I don't think is rocket science. You're, you, you, you need to, they need to respect your strength to know that they don't need to protect you, to know that 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 they don't need to resource guard you so they need to know you're strong and then how do you show them you're strong they don't pull you down the street when you grab them they they don't continue to push when they run by and they hit you you don't go Ugh, and knock backwards then once they know you're strong everything changes but they wouldn't know you're strong because you've never done anything strong because you're not strong <laughs> and maybe you're not strong but you're probably stronger than your dog it being strong is or it's strength, right? There's a there's a level of strength for body size. There's also just general strength, but then there's the most important, which is the strength of the mind and spirit. Okay, right? but I'm talking about 
actual strength. But I then think, then there's like strength, like they feel you. But then there's mind strength. Which but I would different. argue that people that are strong minded and have strength in their spirit can always grab another animal, you know. And yeah. Not not like sh not um hurt the animal, but they grab right bro, bro. with and you want me to flex? You were flexing when I was no, I wasn't. It. Now I'm okay. Let me know. I'll let you know so you can flex more. Um, but it doesn't take much. That was my left hand too. You should see my right. That's crazy. But <laughs> someone who has a strong spirit is going to be able to intervene in a meaningful way, even if they're not that strong. Like there's a lot of grandmas that are. You don't want to cross them. You don't want to get on the wrong side of them. Yeah because they are strong in the spirit. Yeah, so I'm getting off my soapbox. People got to step it up. It's out of control. Can I take this in a different direction? Yeah, I'm done. So this is kind of taking it a bit back into the same direction, but uh, weird couple ideas here. So this is not suitable for this podcast, but I'm gonna quote it anyways, because the uh, force free folks will have a, a cow, but. One of my favorite movies is called Point Break. And I think it came out in 1991. Surfer slash yeah. bank robbery movie. Yeah. And Keanu Reeves is in the back of a truck about to rob a bank, even though he's an FBI agent. And Patrick Swayze has a great line in there. And uh, I think I have a, just have a good memory. And he says, it's basic dog psychology. He's like, you get them peeing down their leg and they submit. He says, so you project strength to avoid conflict, essentially. I, I didn't get it precisely, but that's what he was saying, right? Yes. And so he's saying when you enter a bank, which has a bunch of strong people in it, and you know, if you overwhelm them with strength and power and kind of get them concerned or fearful, yeah. then you're able to go in the bank, take the money and leave. Yes. Right? And so first of all, I'm not saying you're doing that or that anyone else is doing that, but what do you think of that? I mean, he did, he called it basic dog psychology. Yeah. Yeah. As you were saying that, I was thinking like, okay, when someone shows up on my property, what do I do? Do I, then I, like you said that, and I'm like, I don't project, I don't, don't project strength right away. Hmm. Here's what I do. I don't look at the dog. I don't talk to the dog. I don't do anything. And then people go, oh my God, my dog never approaches men. And I'm like, yeah, because mm -hmm. I didn't look at it. I didn't reach for it. I didn't do anything. You and almost then, ignore it, right? I don't almost ignore it. I completely ignore the dog. And then the people go, oh my God, I can't believe the dog came up to you. Well, it's because every human being in the world goes, oh, dog. And then they stare and then they do this. And then the dog lashes out. Mm -hmm. So I don't project. So Practic Swayze's point, I project no strength. I don't do anything. And then the dog, it comes down. We go to the pasture all the time. It's almost 90% of the time what we do. And then we let the dog go. And then if the dog, it's force meets force. The dog wants to launch itself at me in a jumping way. I, I see it coming 80% of the time. I move six inches into the dog to throw its timing off and the dog takes the hit. I love that you just said that because it goes right into what I wanted to talk about. This is, this is a match made in heaven here. Okay, so can I, I'll finish my point. Yeah, yeah keep going. So to Patrick Swayze's point, <laughs> whatever his name was in that movie. Bodhi. Um, yeah, and then it's, um, and then I basically, I do all these things and then I start looking. There was a dog today and he would just walk by me and I would just stare at him and I would just go, what are you looking at? Like you, after the- You mad dogging him? I was fully mad dogging him. I was mean mugging him as I say in my videos. And I told them, I'm like, you guys, it's, it's, it's the people I was talking about earlier. When he walks by, don't talk to him. Just freaking look at him. Like, what are you looking at? This dog's attacking people. It's attacking dogs. And it, it, just because, because he, he felt like it, they own the dog the whole life. The, the dog's whole life. The dog had no mental. We went through all the history. I wanted to make sure the breeding. I wanted to make sure nothing was wrong with the dog, except the people were, were so soft on the dog for so long. It just decided it rules the roost. The days of ruling the roost are over. Um, and I just would mean mug the dog as he goes by. Oh, how would you mean? What, why, Joel? Because you have to. Isn't it weird that you have to almost justify yourself some, with some clients because what the intensity 
an attitude you're bringing is so foreign to what they're used to. Oh yeah. I mean, we had that with the in-home a little bit in-home training session. Not a ton. The video but, that I put out. Yeah, but a bit of like it's there. It's always like that. Wow, you're you're being kind of tough on my dog. Yeah, it's always like that, and I have to explain it in the middle of it. I have to go. Here's why I'm doing this, and I have to explain it in real time to them. Sometimes I like over-explain it if I think that they're not understanding. And you know what you say to them? What? We'll, we'll do this all day. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll mean my your dog all day. I had two, two pieces that I've told my wife in the last two months. I've told you one on the podcast, I think, which was the using the go get method for kids, right? I mentioned that one on the last podcast. And then the one I told my wife, I think on Friday night was it's the, we'll do this all day. Yeah. Like we're going to push. If we think that something, if I don't want you in this room, cause you're not supposed to be in the kitchen cause we're cooking, you know, bread at 500 degrees in here. And I don't think it's safe here. I'm going to move you out. And if you come back, I'm going to move you out. I was trying to tell her, Joel's, we'll do this all day. Yeah. We'll do it 400 times in yes. a row. Yes. We'll do it till the behavior stops. You, you, the you, level, people don't have that level these days, I don't think. Mm, like, we'll yeah. do it 500 times, a yeah. thousand. Yeah, you have to. But if you, if I think if, if your opponent, whatever that might be, whatever challenge you're having, whether it's a, a young kid who's trying to teenage kid out will yeah will employ you when they look at you and they see a strong male or female that is um, what is what was the term I used uh, that had conviction in their belief and they look at you and they go Joel will do this ten thousand times yeah. then they just go away yeah probably because they realize I can't win this one yeah they can't win the battle. Yeah, what was it? Was it the Super Nanny show? And she was some English that. lady, and she'd come in. She was and, tough, right? Yeah, and it was like yeah, instant change. Not the kids changed instantly. Oh yeah. The 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 energy in the household. She'd come in, and it would just be like, "You got to stop this." To the parents and like the kid, there's consequences, and it was just this, it, this instant like, our whole household just. It doesn't mean things got perfect. It takes a long time for that ship to turn. The relationship ship takes like this giant turn it takes a long time but like me or the super nanny can come in and 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 do some things real quick but then the, the owners have to do it but that's kind of what i'm doing is like it's it changes today it stops today and you have to do that at home with your dogs and is it but it's not going to be as easy as with me because i'm so i'm a new it. person and, well and i'm a new person like the dog goes oh okay i don't mess with this guy well you could act like me your dog would take a month to go i'm not going to mess with this guy yeah. Or a week. That was 15 or to 20 years ago, right? That show? That was a long time ago. Yeah. So did you steal most of your good dog training skills from the super nanny? Yeah. Yeah. I watched it religiously. <laughs> She's going to call like, I want some of that yeah. YouTube money or something. I want the piece of your business. I helped you with the business plan. Yeah. She was a tough. Yeah, you're right. Once you yeah. said UK, I think I remembered her and that she was, but there was always so many problems in the household. Right. You can yeah, kind of see the dog thing. If I was in people, more people's homes, it's the exact same thing. You want to keep going? I got, no, I got I'm more. done. Okay. So as I take, Hey, Princey boy, um, I was like, Oh, I like that. Uh, as I think about dog, I was, you were talking about dog conflict, dog fights and mm -hmm. stuff. So I wanted to get your take on this. So as I've been a, I don't know if I'm a connoisseur of it, but just because I like watching, UFC, I end up getting a lot of stuff in my feed that's like fight related. Yeah. And so as I don't want to watch that, but I can't take my eyes off of whatever the video is. Cause when I see conflict, I get, you know, I, I want to see what happens. I get okay. interested. Right. So as I think about it, um, I've started to notice that it seems like about 99% of fights with humans yeah. can be avoided. Oh, is, is what I've just noticed. I go, he could have left, but he decided to be an idiot and they both didn't really want to fight, but it eventually ramped up to the point where I have a lot of fight videos to. on my feed. Yeah. And so, so then I was thinking there are, from my experience with what I've seen with dogs, there is kind of that energy where they spot each other and they're, they go, there's oh, a piece of dogs. that. 
So yeah. yeah. So as we tie back to dogs, there's a piece, there's a smaller percentage of dogs that look at each other, the hyper dominant ones, probably and aggressive, and they see each other and they just go at it. Um, but what about the general population of dogs? What percentage of dog fights could be avoided? Do you think? That's a, you have to narrow your question. Is that down. too much for you? What percentage of dogs, when they're together, together? I mean, would a, like, Prince would not, if we just let him outside and he started walking down the street, I don't think he would get in a dog fight. Do you? Prince would never get into a dog fight, but also Prince is not like putting up with a lot of nonsense. So, so he could get in a dog fight. If he meets a dog and the dog's like, what's up, bro? Like there's going to be a whole posture off and then P Prince is going to, I, he is going to fight. I, I, I mean, he's got a crazy job. He's not ex taking a lot. Of, the problem is, and I use analogies with my clients. Like if you're walking down the street and somebody kind of bumps you in the shoulder and then kind of looks at you like this, it's not okay in our society to punch them square in the nose as hard as you can. Did that guy do something not cool to you? Yes. Can you attack him because he wasn't cool and then he stared at you a little too long? Our society says you cannot. And now, it is justified, right? <laughs> no, it might be. I'm just kidding. No, it might be if the guy, you know, we're talking a bump and then a, a stare down. Staring's a big deal in humans and dogs. Right? I know, but our society, yes, but our society says you cannot attack them. So like if Prince runs around like, He's going to be the guy who's not really going to take a, a bump mm -hmm. very well. But or you a stare have to, down either, right? You ha or a stare down. But you have to take a bump and a stare down in our world. In dog world, they don't follow the same rules. But you also don't want to pay for vet bills when your dog doesn't start it. When your dog does start it, but he doesn't start it. Who started it? Who, who really started it? You can't it? really say. You can't right. really say. Um, I took Prince to a dog park eight months ago. I couldn't relax. Bro, he walks in there, four male dogs go up to him. They're all just standing there like, what's up? And then Prince is like, what's up? And then another one comes up and is like, what's up? And I'm just like, this is going to pop off at any moment. Yeah. He's not, new, he's not, he's intact. Yeah. And like, you know. You can cut the. Uh, the tension with a knife. Yeah. That's Prince is not going to just go in there and go, okay, yeah, you're the boss, buddy. You know, but these these males can figure it out, just like in our society. These males at a bar can generally figure just it like out. Wolves, yeah, yeah. Well, wolves that's that's more violent, but um, but it, not but within it doesn't the pack. have to be right. The idea is, is well, it depends the... within the pack or or another pack coming in. They would just they will violently kill another pack of wolves, but within themselves, wolves. The difference is they're all related mm -hmm. in a wolf pack yeah. for the most part. So you're 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 going after your daughter or your son. Or like a or cousin, your husband right? or, something or like a cousin. That. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually a whole thing in that of um, like why there's no real altruism in the wild. Like meerkats will do it a little bit. Wasn't there a mongoose maybe, but there... really you only you, and you might say, well, what about bees and ants? Bees and ants are all a collection of, of cousins and ants and whatnot. They're all related. They have the same mom. So altruism, it, it's not altruism if it's your family. Animals don't just do stuff for other animals. So I think that they are not related to. There was it almost a story exist. about, I want to say it was some type of attack. I want to say it was an attack from at least the animals that were involved was a killer whale, a humpback whale, and maybe a shark. But I think it could have been that the orcas were going after a smaller whale and yes. another whale, like a humpback whale got involved. It was, it was a cross species and it like got violent to protect a different species. Have you heard yeah. of this? I haven't heard of that one, but I, I hear about stories I heard it like in, this. In Hawaii. Well, hippos will do it, right? A, there's a, a gazelle in the water and the, the, the uh, crocodile has its leg and the hippo comes over and gets mad at the crocodile. Yeah, the it's hippo, crazy. The, well, the difference is the hippo just doesn't want the nonsense around it. It's not protecting well, anything. He's the alpha yeah, he's so just he's like, like, it's enough of this nonsense in my little corner of the river. Like, get out of here. He's not, he doesn't, and hippos will often accidentally kill the gazelle. 
He's like, it's a no wake zone, bro. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, I saw this article the other day, a, and I read the whole article because I was like, this is fascinating. They said that a crocodile, you can Google this right now. Crocodile helps a dog. And there was a picture of it, but no video. This They said the dog walked in the water and, oh, it was running from a pack of wild dogs. And they, they, these pack of wild dogs ran this other dog into water. And then they said the crocodiles ushered the dog down the river away from the crocodile, away from the dogs, and then let it out. And I'm like, this can't be true. This but makes no true? sense. We don't know. I need the video. Yeah. Maybe we can Google it right the now. The days of the article, we don't, we're past that. We're on the YouTube days of like, show me what you're talking show about. Show us. Yeah. Will you just Google? I have a YouTube right here. We have, Last week was what, Baby Hippo? Or that was the day before? That was my week. Oh, before. there's the Baby Hippo being murdered by uh, um, hyenas. hyenas. The worst animal in the history of the animal Are kingdom. the forest free folks, do they just care about dogs or do they care about baby Look hippos? Look at the neck on the Look hyena, at the pain though. of the baby hippo slowly dying. I know. The forest free folks Rest care about that. Peace. It's a, It's a very violent, horrible death. You said crocodile or alligators? Crocodile. Crocodile. Right. Yeah. Uh, helps dog. dog. Helps dog. You feel bad if. Um, Bro, why isn't that? Well, you're on YouTube. So if they don't. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. If it's Pack of crocodiles save dogs. Yeah. So okay. see, they don't have. Why? What What moron sits Let's there and see. takes pictures? Oh, see, that's B roll. That's B roll right there. They only have pictures. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have shown. Look at. See, there's a crocodile. Yeah, I don't believe it. I don't, yeah, they just show why it. Why like didn't a, they just eat the... Oh, that's what I was thinking. They're too small. They have a B-roll of alligator just sitting there that they got off Google yeah, Docs or something. See, I don't believe it either. Although, yeah. if it's small crocodiles, like they're like, I can't kill this dog. I'm not yeah. going to try. I don't believe it. Yeah, yeah. you're right. We're yeah. at a new level in the world where if you tell me a story that your dad told me or something, we just... We don't care. Yeah. If it, if it didn't... What do they always... What do the young kids always say? Like pictures or it didn't happen or something they say something like oh, that yeah yeah right that's what i say about this see there it is again deal. pack of it has 7900 views which means no one watched it because it didn't uh, actually it was actually that is 40 that is 40 but it's, yeah, also it's fake weak. But, and that's through random but it looks like it's a decent page the way they they kind of put the youtube no i saw graphics. it on my like my news feed through apple news like it was it was um the aggregate it was like a legit article no, I believe it. I believe that they said it. I just am not sure if it actually yeah. happened the way they said it. All right. You know, yeah. that's just my thought. Did you have voicemails or did you want to move on to something else? Yeah. Um, let's go. Let's go to this one just because it's such a, it's such a specific question. I feel, I feel like we could go off on this one for a minute. Hey, calling in from the Sunshine State. Uh, just had a question. Do you believe that Mothering dogs causes them like psychological issues. Um, we have a seven month old puppy and we keep him on a 50 foot leash in the backyard. Um, but if that's gonna like do weird things to him, we don't want to keep doing it. <laughs> so, thanks. Easy peasy. So, I think tethering dogs has a makes them a uh, seven month old. You gotta know the age. Here's the answer, Sunshine State. Um, lady, mm -hmm. that, that's not just call, call her sunshine. Right? No, sunshine. She didn't say her name. Oh, okay. Um, the answer is absolutely not. A fifty-foot leash in the backyard. Is that dangerous? Oh well, I mean, I, I don't think they're talking about the danger of like it getting wrapped up. I mean, I, I mean, I didn't even think about that. Hmm. Tether you. The dog has fifty feet to cruise around and do what it wants and have fun and. It's fine. You want to know the the tethered dog? You know who else is a tethered dog all the time? Me in this office all day. <laughs> that's that's true. It's a two foot leash. Um, me no. Here's here's a tethered dog all the time. A service dog. They're tethered all the time. They cruise around. The wheelchair is cruising, and the service dog is next to them, just going. I never get to leave. Like Eeyore? Yeah, like Eeyore. Just no one ever pets me because I have this vest on that says, don't pet me, I'm a service dog. And that's a tethered dog all the time too. Now, I kind of made it sound like that was um, a mean to do. 
And in some ways it is, but good service dogs are tethered all the time and learned helplessness kicks in and they're just the greatest dogs ever for service work. What do you think? Greatest being the quotes. So I'd have personally, as someone who knows less than nothing, if I knew that I knew some, if I knew that I knew nothing, nothing, that would be something, but I don't. That's also a quote from Point Break, but um, is... And I've actually experienced this because when I was a kid, we had a tethered dog. And I find it a bit disturbing myself. Um, I believe it could have been a chain, but not like a thick chain, but like a little yeah wire. Chain. Yeah, like a metal wire chain. Yeah, that's or still what they're made of usually. But the, you know the reason why he was on that? Because no. I think the fence was broken. Well, that's the thing. When she said that, I was like, this is Florida. I've been to Florida. You people who live in places that don't have fences is weird. Dude, there's half the country. People just don't put fences up in their backyards. High do, fences do you make know this? for good neighbors. That's yeah, what I've been taught. Yeah. Do you know this? Um, yeah, there's places in the country, but also like barbed giant. wire is very common as well. And barbed wire often is not going to keep almost anything out. Okay. I'm just saying there are neighborhoods, vast swaths of this country where they just build houses and then everyone's backyard just is together. I've, that is it is it insane to me bro you got to travel more no i've seen it i okay. think it's insane what i'm saying it's, is, i think it's insane so in new mexico and places like that you might have 50 100 200 acres and it's just very difficult to fence it other than doing no, i get that other than We're doing barbed wire houses with no yeah backyards. that's interesting to say the oh least. my god there's giant swaths of this country that do it but why I don't know. I mean, if you have a dog, I'd like it to be confined. I'm sure some force-free folks. Not even a dog. How about that. just walking out and do, in your backyard and your neighbor's walking out too? Like, let's, the front yard's one thing. The backyard, Southern California is fences. I love it. Oh yeah, they're way better. But you, you gotta, you, now you're going to start noticing this. You'll go to Florida. I lived in Florida and they're just like, you're just, they're just everybody, everyone's backyard is right there. So that's, I assume what she's talking yeah. about and you got to like tether your dog i think it's great like your dog HOA or something some type of i don't know yeah so i have a full fence around my backyard so do I. legit one that you can't see um or anyone kind of unless you're at a high enough level like eight feet or something and then the front yard has like turf right and then i have a white picket fence made out of some type of vinyl yeah and it actually doesn't completely go around the only purpose is to keep the dogs off of oh and i want yeah, to talk to you about this on your turf so it's been the greatest investment ever keeping dogs off because then they just have to go to the next one and they don't like to crap on the uh on the cement right yeah. so they just move on to the next victim there's a guy he is three to four houses down you'll see him on the way out and he put brand new really nice sod like some type of bermuda sod legit and i saw somebody there's dogs just peeing and doing whatever else on and i'm like that's so obnoxious i was talking to my wife about it and i'm like this is just causing damage to this guy's i walked by it the other day there's just like burn holes oh yeah burn holes in this uh, brand it's brand new it probably costs three grand or more I to put in and it's I know. looks crap dude if prince pees on a fescue so for everyone out there, if you have dogs, don't put fescue in, per, 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 Bermuda, Bermuda in. Okay. You'll literally just have a brown spot and guess what? Nothing will grow there. You have to cut it out and reseed. If you have Bermuda, it'll just keep growing and weaving and really? it'll just fix itself. Yeah. Bermuda is the best. It just goes. It's really brown. tough, right? Yeah. And it goes, it goes, it goes dormant in the winter if you're, if it's cold. And that's I what people. fescue don't. did too. Nope. Fescue is always green. I think you're wrong. Google it. Bro. <laughs> You don't think I know I about have fescue in the backyard? Great. It's a certain type, but it goes green. Then you don't have the, the normal fescue. You don't have. I'm telling fescue. Google it. No, we'll do it. We later. need you an wanna... answer, dude. Okay. All right. All right. You keep saying something really cool while I Google it. Okay? I will. So, so here's actually, I won't say something really cool, but just so you know, I got Prince out of the car. And I didn't have a leash on him today, so we just kind of cruised out. Dormancy can occur in tall fescue growth when temperaments. Okay, drop below fifty. Hmm. I have fescue, and it goes below fifty, and that's why does. it turned. I the reason I know is because I bought fescue, 
like three years ago. And then it goes dormant in November till about February. That's how I know that. November, December, June. Really? Yeah. And then my father-in-law has Bermuda and he tried to get me to get Bermuda grass. And I didn't like it because it was so thick. It's like I love thick. Bermuda. It's thick, but I, my, I don't care about the grass. I only wanted it because for the small kids to be able to play in soft grass. That's the reason I did it. Um, but pro tip out there for you guys, if you, as it's about to go dormant, if you don't mow it, if you mow it, it will look completely dead. But if you leave like the last growth before it goes dormant yeah. and just a bit long, it actually looks pretty decent. And it, if it's like maybe five, six inches or whatever length, yeah. it'll just stay that way for like four months. All right. Pro grass tip. All right. I was wrong about fescue. But we, I love you anyways. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So Prince got out of the car and he went to your fence and he was going to do the biggest pee on your fence. And I called him away. Is he going to? pee in the office here or no no on your little white fence out there did he get to go though or no no so he's holding it yes you okay there he's fine and he princey is, an is here ago. and he can he knows when we're talking about him it's oh, great yeah you can see it in his eyes yeah look at him he's just staring at you and me that's fantastic he's a good boy princey's the best boy everything um, i say to him is a total copy of what you say to him so if oh. you're thinking I sound like your son, yeah. your son's trying to sound like you and so am I. Oh, that's funny. It's because I hear all your videos. That's funny. And now he's coming over. Here he is. He yeah. doesn't. Oh, hi, boy. Oh, he's the best boy. Hi, boy. Look at this. His head is so big. It's so hard to really show people how big his head is. It doesn't look that big on the screen. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. He's a really good dog. Yes, he is. I always, I hold you to such a high standard though with his conduct at this, on this property. You're the best in the nation. I want very well dog. behaved dog. He's a good boy. I was going to make a video. I'll preview it here. And then you tell me if you're interested in this. I was going to make th this video alone, but I didn't. It's going to take some time uh -huh. about like the levels of YouTube dog trainers being there's all these different type of YouTube dog trainers, right? So there's the talkers and I was going to label them, right? There's the talkers. Then there's the train their own dog in their own home people. Mm -hmm. And then it just goes up the ladder. And then it eventually, and then it's the train other people's dogs, but don't train aggressive dogs. Yeah. And then at the top, the hierarchy is train other people's aggressive dogs. And each level, they are at that level because they cannot do the next level. So if the talkers had. So in the bottom level, talkers is this weird level because, but mm. I kind of give them a pass in a way because they're just almost doing like podcasts and talking videos, Yeah. but, but they're dog trainers. So why wouldn't they show their own dog? Is it could be because their dog's bad or just because they like talking. But then if you're not showing your own, the minimum of a dog trainer should be, you have a good dog. That's my point. And if you don't, if you don't show your own dog, I have to assume you don't know how to train your own dog. You don't own one or you don't have a good one. And if you don't own one, why the hell don't you own a dog? You're a dog trainer. So then you go to the next level and you train other, you train your dog in your own home. Well, why don't you train your dog out in the world? Yeah. I assume you can't train your dog out in the world. Okay. Show me how you it's done. You train your dog out in the world. Well, why don't you train other people's dogs? I have to assume you don't know how to train because you're going to get rewarded by the algorithm and by the viewers to do the next level. Why aren't you doing the next level? Because you can't do the next level. Can I improve it? I, yes. So first, do you mind hitting that red button to turn that air conditioning off? I am freezing. <laughs> and so is the little princey boy too. And then you just turn it back on. There you go. Perfect. Now it's hot already. Uh, so the way you improve it is that you're wrong about the top. The top is actually um, not about train uh, somebody training an aggressive dog. It's about training a dog to train another aggressive dog. Am I right or am I right? Wow, you are right. <laughs> and I never thought of that. And it just happens that that one the change you made promotes me even more. So that's why I'm the head of marketing. Right? I know you're like the biggest fan, true, though. fan in the world. You're actually right. I try to find people. You're that actually use dogs. right. I know. 
That's why I said it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, you're you're that's there is a tippy top there. It sounds so like of mastery. Yeah. Which is freaking crazy because it's not just about training your own dog to train other dogs. You have to understand you have to understand risk and reward and you have to you have to know mm. your dog so well and know the other dog so well and be able to read body language and then of course the main thing is how do you actually train a dog to train another dog? You have to know that. Yeah. But you're, you're right. I know. So it's, there's two people on that list. Yeah. It's, it's really, right. it's really cool. And I remember there's a YouTube comment where the guy wow. had said, mind blown. You should, you, that dog's going to get hurt talking about yeah. Prince. And then of course I responded on my own channel and said, uh, really? Cause Prince is four and hasn't been hurt. And Bosco is eight or 10. Bosco and, died at 11. And, and he didn't get hurt. hurt and he never got, you know, in trouble. So seems like 15 yeah. years is starting to, and it's the only trend, thing I'll right? take away from you, the only thing I'll take away from you to be yeah. full disclosure, and I think you'll agree with this, is this amazing level at being the top, top trainer because you use a dog to train other aggressive dogs was not your idea. Nope. In no way. It was just a where would I, where the heck would I get that idea? Other than you, it's like you don't invent. You've heard this right. Something isn't always invented; it's discovered. That's what it was. Have you heard about this? No. So I invented that type of thing. Uh, grappling people, wrestling, the takedown. I invented that. It's like you discovered it. It's right, been going right, on right, for right. two thousand, ten thousand years. Yeah. You just rediscovered it or discovered maybe it. Maybe put a name to it, maybe perfected it. But you you discover or you discovered or rediscovered by something. By happen chance. By happenstance, yeah. And then the chance. Happen chance. <laughs> the issue though is that there's a level of brilliance to be able to go, wow, or humility to be to maybe other people would have seen that and just thought, you know that they didn't have anything to learn from having one dog teach another dog. Right. You thought of it as a, uh, it is a turning point in the business and in your life probably. Yeah. And it was 15 years ago when I let Bosco into the backyard of a 40 pound terrier's house and he got in Bosco's face and barked and lunged. And I just saw Bosco diffuse the dog and do this crazy thing without doing anything to the dog. And I said, that's insane what I just saw. Yeah. And then I said, he needs to be, I said, he's got a gift. And then I used that gift. Yeah. And then I, I trained Prince to have that gift because mm -hmm. he does not naturally have that gift. Yeah. He, don't you always say he's not, he doesn't have the level of dominance and intensity that Bosco had. He does naturally. not. Bosco. He's got to work at it. He's got to work on it. Yeah. Bosco. Um, um, what is it? Guys want to be like him. Girls want to be with him. Is that the term? I don't know. That sounds. You've good never though. heard that. No, like I a, heard a it. stud guy. Yeah. Like guys want to be friends with him. I think and girls want to be with. We're him. on different social media stuff, and that was Bosco. Like, like a surf like the, quote. Yeah, like uh, everyone wanted to be his friend, and no one wanted to cross him. And the I think Bosco is more of we'll do this all day, and Princey's like we'll do this most of the day yeah. and then i want to break yeah i'll take a day off every now and then <laughs> right. and he needs a day off. prince takes a day off that was a pretty funny video it's yeah good. i know people like were like yeah they said all kinds of things about that i think it was fun that's a video prince takes the day off is the thumbnail if yeah. you want to see it yeah that's funny um he has a lot of days off just so everyone knows <laughs> like, I, don't, at it. I don't do that many sessions if, if you watch the beginning of this podcast my body can't handle too many sessions yeah so Central nervous thing, central nervous system is super interesting. Oh, and with uh, dogs too. If you think even about um, physical training and exercise and things like that, uh, generally you don't have big problems with overloading your central nervous system uh, in general. You. Just no, most people. People, people oh, right. in general don't work out intensely enough to actually have a problem with that. But when you start doing like a lot of squats and deadlifts and very maybe some calisthenic stuff to failure you actually can especially deadlift the reason they tell you to take it off is because it's actually hard on your central nervous system really 
Because exercise is hard on your central nervous system. It needs to recover is really what it your is. Your central nervous yes. system. Yes. So it's, but mostly deadlift is what's known for this. It's powerlifting, heavy stuff. Powerlifting. So you have to think about, there's, there's the pathways too. So it's not just about being strong. It's about being strong and having the like neural pathways of how to do the movement. And then if you do like pull-ups is like my specialty. So since I've done them for so long, I will just always be good at them. Okay. because I've done them for a long time. The pathways are all there. So there's a level of like central nervous system help that you'll be able to do. But as we get it back to like pulling something, you have to think if it's one rep, two reps, five reps, it's totally different than a normal curl exercise where you do it 20 times, right? So to be able to pull something that's so heavy, you can only do it once or twice, it fatigues you in a different way. Mm. It's not like your muscles just get sore. It's like your whole body gets sore. Yeah, but okay, remember when to the gun range? Mm-hmm. And like, I think I did it after multiple sessions and yeah. then I'm in, I'm, I'm there and it's like, it's fine. It's just these noises. Yeah. And it was like, it was a lot. Was it overloading you? It was a little bit. Yeah. But that's, that's my that central nervous system deal. I've never thought not for me, but that's, that's where the central nervous system gets wigged out is in doubt. Those type of environments you're talking about it. I don't even understand. Yeah. Lifting this is weight. Old. No, it's, it's powerlifting, powerlifting. It's, it's a. It, it taxes your central nervous system. Well, there, the body, though? think about it. Think about there's no outside stimuli that's you're not being scared. You're using your central you're nervous not, system. Mm, you're using it's, it's never thought of it that way. So, like, there is so when you imagine something that weighs, imagine someone weighs 200 pounds and they're deadlifting 500 pounds, right? Oh, okay. I've never that's not lift heavy weights, but that's not natural, right? Picking up 500 pounds is well, not that's that true. natural. Not to say that, right. um, that makes sense. but so, but also there's just a level of, I think grinding somebody down enough. So like certain amount of volume, I just find generally people don't do enough actual work or I always hear people, oh, they're burned out. A lot of times people are burned out and there's a whole bunch of people that are just lazy. Right. Right. Hey, can I take this back to dogs real quick? No. Okay. Yeah, We're ahead. weightlifting <laughs> Yeah. and I'm not trying to get you off of it, but I have like, I don't want to say I've perfected it. Even today with that difficult dog, I was like, we can't do one more dog. Mm -hmm. Like the central nervous system of the dog, it's, it's at its max. And my goal is generally, not all the time, to get it to its max without going over that final little point of which it cannot handle it. Because right after that central nervous system gets to the point, if we go over it, crazy things happen. Yeah. Like really crazy you things happen with dogs. The mark. You can't with dogs. Yeah. They'll if they have a, a, a bit of aggression in them, it'll come out at that point. But we have to take them there, and that's what the force-free folks don't get. They think everything is about keeping the dog so under threshold, so protected. But you have to build the dog like you build anything else. Like you have to tax them so that they can build up the defenses within their body to be able to be taxed a little bit more like a long distance running. You don't go out and run um, a marathon. Mm -hmm. You just don't, you, you piece it together. And that's what you have to do with these dogs is you have to, if they're a little tripped out, you got to stop it. That little tripped out is good. Then next time they get a little more tripped out and then they can start to handle it. Then they can start to handle just life because their brain can get tripped out. Their nervous system can get tripped out without them getting tripped out. It's literally identical with weightlifting. It is. Oh. It's progressive overload is what they call it. Yeah. So it's a, it's like the law of repeated bouts. You just continue to add a little more stimulus than the last time, right? And that's how you just start to squat yeah. five pounds, 10. You keep adding 10 to 15. And then the body adapts. You don't push so hard that the body can't adapt. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's called stress recovery adaptation. That's the system oh. of yeah, that strength is training, same. essentially. And so, but if you lift a hundred pounds for 10 reps over and over and over, right? You will never get stronger. It might get easier to do. You might get slightly stronger, but you're never going to be like strong as you would if you did a progressive okay. overload. You know, and my son, can I ask you about. a question? Yeah. My son goes to the gym with me mm -hmm. and he's 12, but he wants to like He's well, all into bench press yeah, right now. He he's buff. 74 pounds yeah. and he wants to bench his weight. He can do 
55 pounds, but then we only have 10 pound bars, 10 pound dumbbells. So basically uh, we, so, so because we don't have five pounds at this gym, they're just 10 more pounds. We have a 35 pound bar and then 45, two tens. Yeah. So we can only add two more tens at this point. So how does he get strong? Cause I just tell him, do what you can as many as, as the viewers are right now, just clicking off. Yeah. Just, no, this is crazy good. If people don't like no, this, this is good for you. No, this is, this is the same thing. Okay. So how does my son, uh, bench, uh, get, get stronger? Cause what you just told me, I'm like, I didn't know that. Like I, I can have him. I'm like, dude, you can do the bar seven times, 35 pound bar, yeah. not 45. And I'm like, do the bar a bunch. Next time you'll be a little stronger and then be a little stronger. You're saying no. Oh, it, he'll get stronger. You, you will. If you do the same movement over and over and over, it will become easier and easier, and easier. So there is a level of strength that you're okay, getting, but it's good. not, it's pretty, it's like diminishing returns. Like you can only do, uh, just like doing small effort or whatever, but to answer your question. So a, you need to get the two and a half yes, pounds yes, on each side, you're right. but I have micro plates over here. Yeah, I need, and so you can actually get to the micro plates have, I think they're a quarter, two quarters, two halves, two, th- three quarters and two or, and a one pound, I think. And so essentially you can get it because there's certain things that are maybe overhead press, maybe, but for him would be perfect that you can only hit so hard because five pounds up is too much. Right. Yeah. And that's actually, what's funny is I just, my wife started working out in the gym here and, um, she's complaining cause she's, I'm not pushing her hard enough with the workout. I'm like, you're going to be adding, you keep adding. It will get really hard really quick. And so you just trust the process of adding five pounds every session. But so, but what I told her is to do push-ups because, um, if you can't do like 20, 30 plus perfect push-ups, you don't really need to be doing bench press. Oh, right. But so if he does push-ups every other day, that's true. He will be able to do 75 pounds. Okay. So that's the answer. Okay. That's what I'll tell him every other because, and he'll do it every other. Don't let him do it every day. Cause it's the same oh. thing with the dog training, stress, recovery, adaptation. Okay. How many pushups? 20. No, he, uh, be like one less to failure. Yes. So yes, yes. keep his form, but you have to hit him hard on the fact his form has to be good every other day. Got yeah. it. That's what I'll do. Yeah. So when you don't take a break, that's where you get the central nervous stuff. You start to like run yourself into the ground because your body doesn't get a chance to rebuild. Okay. And that's, but what you're saying back to the dog training is totally the same. Everyone wants to keep it at the same weight because it's comfortable versus no, we need to get you out of your comfort zone and push just that much more today. And then the next day, it's like just that much more. It's not a lot. It's a little bit. I honestly think the force free folks, and I don't want to just crap all over the force free folks, every single thing. I don't know. I just don't feel like it. But um, I don't think they understand that concept in any way this concept of like challenge the dog a little bit, like it's under threshold. It it, it is, there are dogs that, that that you can't live life with them under threshold. The, the life is over threshold and they go Mm. so micro slow that they'll, they can never go on a walk or they can, it's just, it's out of control. I don't want to spend much time on that, but But name some, name something that was, we're speaking kind of goofy today. Uh, name something in life that was worthwhile that wasn't incredibly challenging i know nothing right nothing i mean i can't think of anything and then even kids are challenging and your wife right there's as great as things are there's compromise there's difficulties and it's all about overcoming and so forth right so that's to think that it's all about staying keeping myself and probably dogs and everyone keeping myself in a comfort zone is probably the worst thing I oh could my do God. to myself to live a terrible life. That's a great point. Right? Why don't they get that? They're, well, I don't think they train a ton of folks. dogs is the problem. I think you're right. I never see them train dogs. So I'm always like, dude, what oh, if, can you're, I, you're right. <laughs> I think you're, I think that's, it's nail on the head. They actually don't know dogs. No. Well, the funny part is that they are on <laughs> they the bottom don't. level of talk oh. about dogs. And they ne- Or they get to the next level. I was listening their to their dogs, their home. They, right. That's how they live life under threshold. Yeah, I know. Lock yourself in the house. I mean, to a degree. And you're, yeah. And then look how you raise your kids with them. One of the best 
shapers of behavior. I give her props. I send people to her channel, trains her own dogs in her own house. And people are like, oh, you're the greatest trainer ever. She, I, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. She trains them in the house. She just trains her own dogs in her own home. But she trains dogs at least. But go, I, you got it. You got to show us what you can do. You're, you're not really a dog trainer. But training your own dog is way easier than training. That's what I'm saying. Like aggressive dogs. It, you can't. That aren't yours. I, 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 I call her a trainer because mm -hmm. she trains dogs. I mean, the, the verbiage is difficult here, right? Okay. But like, we need to see, we need to see what you can do with someone else's dog. True. But, but think about the first rung, which is the trainers that don't talk. train. They don't just train. Like, how can you actually be a dog trainer if you don't actually train dogs? I don't know. That would be. Because you talk a good game. Bro, do you know how much I would love to talk about dog training? Well, we're on a podcast, so I could, but we get into other things. Bro, you ask ask me any questions and I will talk about operant conditioning and Pavlovian yeah. stuff. And it's the easiest and it's the greatest thing in the history of the world. And I can talk about it all day and I could talk about it with anybody. I don't want to bore you guys, but it's so fun and easy taking someone's random dog that shows up at your house that wants to kill other dogs and trying to do something with it is is a hundred times it's harder it's mastery but that's what that's what that's that's what makes me sleep at night is i like think just talking about it and people going oh you're so smart like it's nothing it doesn't video matter has, the one you're talking about has to be made and made soon the one you're talking about with the tiers and the hierarchy of like yes. levels of dog trainers and then i actually was listening to this guy derek from more plates more dates and he was interviewing andrew huberman who i think you're familiar with he's a stanford guy yeah i kind of like him he's a gentleman he seems incredibly smart and they were talking and on I, I have a lot of respect i have respect for both of those guys yeah um but the andrew huberman guy he was saying i thought it was so interesting and it relates to what we're doing and, and then also the channel is there's levels kind of of what people want and they gave a survey so think about what do people want as far as, so he breaks it down like this and I'm doing this all off the top of my head and I wasn't ready to do this, but he was talking about, I want to see the data in the form yeah, he's, of, he's very data driven of, of mice tests yeah. done on mice. Yeah. There's other people say, I don't care about mice. Yeah. I only want to see data relating to humans or chimps, right? Which is hard to get. Yeah. So those yep. are, but you, you get my, yep, yep, my yep. spectrum, right? Yep. Then it gets into, um, I just want to know the overall, and I'm, I'm, I'm bastardizing this a little bit, but the overall overarching consensus, right. Of maybe the data that we're all talking about. So that's like maybe a combination. Then it's, um, I, I don't care about that. I just want to know what you, Andrew Huberman think. Right. Right. And then he said, the last person is, I don't care about any of the data. I just want you to tell me what to do. Right. That's kind of interesting, right? It is interesting, actually. And some of the people, I think, that follow the channel. My channel? Yes. They want to be told what they need to do. But the problem is, those. the good thing is, those people already implicitly trust me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I, I, I trust Amber, A Andrew Huberman. He yeah. is not somebody that I need to go, read me the data. I just go, I... Yeah. I Jordan Peterson. I just yeah, go. I thought that name too. Uh, just not tell me what to do, but like tell me the situation and explain it. I know where you're coming from and I know how smart you are. And I know they have both lived this life and thought about it, especially you listen to Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Bro, you listen to Jordan Peterson. It's, it's weird because he gets like, like he just gets things that no one else gets. Like, I'm at a point in my life where like hard times and like he'll, he'll speak about me. Like he's like, you're going to go through, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, I already trust what are you going through buddy. No, just like in life, like going let us, through let stuff. Let the pod know it's happening. Just in life, like going through stuff. You just, yeah. I don't need to hear him explain his credentials. Yeah. I think, or the there's data. a level. So, and there's people who don't need to hear me explain anything. The fun part about this podcast is that most people who watch 
if I were to ask about a certain behavior, how to handle it, which I've asked you a couple of questions, Hey, how would you deal with this specific thing? Um, you just tell me. And then I say, I tell my wife, he said to do this. Joel said it, boom, done. Don't need yeah. to talk about it. So, but then the pod is a little different because the pod knows they want to hear what you have to say, but then they want to know how you do it. And they want to learn mm. a lot of the people in the comments. There are people that are just asking, what do I do in this situation? And then there's a lot of people that are getting more into the philosophy of dog training. Yeah. And we know this because we read all the comments and we can see what the theme of them is. So it is interesting. Every, not everyone has the same um, goals. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's the problem. What they want out of it. Right. Isn't that, yeah. Isn't that interesting about Huberman? Huberman? Yeah. Yeah. It's very true. thought it was, I don't know. I didn't find out the data, but that's anyways, that's a little, um, where do you call it? Should, oh, so do you mind um, doing some apologies today? Do you have any any apologies? Oh, yeah. I apologize to Who did Eugene, you hurt? Eugene, Oregon. I just, I crapped on Eugene, Oregon. Last podcast, like nobody's so business. Good. So good. I can do that. You know why? Because I grew up there. I can absolutely do it. And I actually did do it. And I stand by everything I said. You're, you're from the streets there, man. You can say whatever you Bro, want. I know people who like, they're like, uh, yeah, my daughter's going to the university of Oregon. I'm just like, I don't see anything. Right. Obviously. But I'm like, why bro? Like, don't do it, man. Well, you've lived in both places that so you would know. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, I see those students walking around at the university of Oregon in the rain. Like there, if you're in college, like there's happy times and you drink a bunch and mm -hmm. that's fun for many people. And, but like, you guys are indoors all the time. Like, don't do it. Raining. Like, don't do it. Go to San Diego State. That's the problem is everyone's going to San Diego State and oh. UCSD. And now it's incredibly hard if you're from California to get in. Yeah. Because they want, you know, they're making that big out-of-state tuition. So off-grid dogs who he left us a voicemail, super good. Uh, couldn't really share it. Because um, he played. Yeah, he played. Video. He played the clip. Yeah. Um but uh, I did think it was uh, good and I'm glad he sent it. He also sent the comment and I'm just reason I'm reading yeah. this comment is because he said this. Yeah. Well, I guess this is a cheaper is cheaper than going to therapy referring to last week, the podcast for me or for the listeners. Uh, probably for I mean, it was a bit of therapy going along last week, but I'm not sure. But what's funny is the second one uh, right below him said rough podcast for Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> That's why I apologize. That was funny. Uh, and then the other person, this is all in one screenshot. It's in the last one just said, Rico said this podcast also allowed Eric to open up Dr. Joel Beckman at work. I saw that. That was funny, right? I didn't think you really opened up. I, no, not much. I tried to, I didn't have Bro, much to say. I, I, when we left that podcast, I talked about me, right? It was about me, but like, and we don't need to get into you, but like, I forgot about your yeah. hard time. And we don't need to get into it. Maybe yeah. that's for another day. You didn't know till later. You've told me about that, yeah. what happened. Yeah, I don't mention it. And much. then you mentioned it after last week's podcast. And I was like, oh my God. Like, like everyone's got something. Like yeah. you have something just gnarly. Yeah, it's pretty meaningful. And then what's funny is I remember like somebody like challenging me in some way. Like, what have you ever been through? Kind oh. of like some kind of like gangster guy said it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I, I just, this happened to me like a year ago. He was like, I'm sorry, dude. Oh, oh, yeah. He like, like backed down. Yeah, he was yeah. like, wow. Like I didn't think, yeah. you know. So it is what it is. But, um, but either way, I think the heart and soul of the podcast last week was that that stuff is the iron that like forges you into what you are, and it makes you tougher. And it's not that you want like let's have some bad stuff happen to us so that we can become better men. No, you just but, live life and bad stuff happens. Yeah, you just to everybody you just get through it. Yeah. Everyone isn't gonna get um out of this thing alive. Yeah. I know people I was gonna say I know people that I don't really know anyone that nothing bad like even a divorce. Like if people just they get it their parents get a divorce and they act all sad about it. I'm like, but even that to somebody can be so traumatic. Like I shouldn't minimize mm -hmm. it in any way. There are ages. Hey, parents out there, you want to get divorced? And 50% of people do. Mm -hmm. Bro, do it under three and after 17. It's a pretty, 
I mean, you got to go through I mean, three. You got to get one, two, and three is causing the divorce. A lot okay, so do it. Yeah, do it under three. Your twelve-year-old, your twelve-year-old, to sit down with your twelve-year-old and tell them what's going on. They're br- yeah. it's 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 bad. But I think it's tr- it's so traumatic on them. Well, but you were just saying it wasn't traumatic. I know, but yeah, I'm saying it is. <laughs> well, it's not that for a three-year-old, you just you don't even know what's going on, and you just grow up with a two-parent household. Okay. That's not that bad. The like issue, that's the that's the norm. The twelve year old, and once you're sixteen, maybe you're almost out of the house. You can kind of understand things. The twelve year old, the ten year old, that dude's that kid is tripping. There's there's so there's so many things, right? There's there's a div- like there's a just divorce, and then two well balanced parents raising a kid separately. That one's a little lesser degree, but then there's the it's a, my. It's not that bad. The wife beats no that one or the wife is getting beaten and picks oh, the kid yeah, and leaves right true. and then there's also just someone's not around much or maybe I mean sometimes they move into different states just because of work and stuff it's not always like then you just grow up without a father maybe yeah you grow up with a mom grow up yeah. without a mom and yeah we know how you feel about kids with fathers <laughs> I like kids with fathers yeah I think it's good yeah I just. That sit down a 12 year I've I've saw a kid, uh, he was 11 at the time. One of my friends, uh, my kid's friends, he, his parents were going through a divorce and it, I just looked at this kid and it was, I, was I just, he, it, 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 he, his heart, everything was broken. He was like a broken kid at that time. It's so difficult. A two year old, they don't know. That's so, they don't have a clue in the world. My it, parents got divorced. I don't remember a thing about it. It's de- Bro, dependent. If you're 12, it's de- but so it's it's also personality dependent, I believe, because you could have some kid that went through that and it's devastating and another kid would be like, "Ah, whatever." Like when my parents separated when I was in um about 12 years old, they separated oh, in when I was uh, tell me. fifth grade and then also when I was in That's sixth true. grade. You didn't care. I didn't care at all, dude. That's crazy. I, I just didn't give a F. Really? I didn't care. Because but here's the thing though, is they used to fight a lot. And so they would oh, scream. So you at wanted each to other. fight it to Yeah, stop. I didn't like it, dude. I didn't like the scream. Okay. This Imagine in the house. Like you kind of don't scream. care though. You're kind of a guy who doesn't give. I don't know. I think some things that some things really bother me. Um that didn't, huh? Yeah, I just it's wild. It, it, it's like they're still in a there. way. I They're guess I'm there, speaking though. in generalities, but oh. did they move to different houses? Yeah. So they, they were essentially divorced. I mean, not... for you, they just didn't use the word. Yeah. I mean, they weren't legally divorced. I mean, divorce is pretty, but did you, and you thought they wouldn't be back together? <laughs> I didn't care. dude. I didn't care. All right. So, so I I'll take happy. this back because I'm sitting with somebody who's like, Joel, I was 12 and I didn't give a, a rat's behind. So I'm, I'm speaking in too much generalities. I guess I'm speaking in my own life and the things I've seen from 12 year olds having kids and seeing kids go through divorce and th- you know, you want me to blow your mind with this though? Yeah. So it's like, there's that level of shell shock that I mentioned just where something happens to you that just breaks you down. Now that obviously can be caused by a death or something really impactful, but it could also be like somebody taking a picture of something and then like flicking. <laughs> and then like my co-host sitting there going, get over it. Yeah. <laughs> And people like, talked about that in the comments. In tears. Can you explain real quick? What was that about? It was uh, my stepdad. T- oh yeah. I had a Tim Brown stepdad. picture. And this is yeah, 30 yeah. years ago. Like it was hard to get pictures. They need to be from a magazine or a newspaper. And he flicked it and put a hole in it. It was like my only picture of my favorite player. And then he just walked away and it like crushed me. That was worse than the divorce. Yeah. Well, you. I don't remember the divorce. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so point, that's what we're talking about. Your, your point stands. Um, the thing, uh, one the last thing I wanted to touch on when you said you went to the gun range and we're, we're like, I think what happens though is you can get sensory overloaded. Uh, Isn't that ner- that's nervous system, right? Yeah, but oh, okay. I think I mean think about you're genuinely nervous when you go there, right? You're going to a place indoors. I, I hadn't gone much where people are shooting guns. You don't know who these people are. Yeah, there's really loud yeah, noises true. that are going off, and you're new to the game, right? Yeah. You weren't. There's you weren't, other other things going on. Yeah, and it's it's a it's true. You know, it's a bit intimidating. Yes, it is to go there. So you're, you're right for an hour or two. You're you're doing this new thing, and you have to trust. Um, so it's not just the noise. There were other factors there. Yeah, that's true. Really quick thing, real quick. 
this is nothing to do with dog training, but I was there with that guy, Mike, who we always say we'll pay him and we never do for talking about him all the time on the podcast. I was with him at the shooting range and he's like a, you know, Afghan vet and stuff like that, multiple tours. And, um, this guy was on our range. He was on my lane and I got one for my buddy and I told the guy to, you know, Hey, you're on my lane. And he's like, go use the other one. And I'm like, no, you go use the other one. This is my lane. He wouldn't get off of it. And it was about to turn into a melee. What? Yeah. And I was like, bro, I don't care. Get off of it. And he was like this kind of big overweight guy. And I was like, you're not bullying me off of this thing. I got, it's my lane. If you think it's not a big deal to go to another lane and you go, bro. And, it's crazy. Uh, but then the worst well, it's part. It's crazy. It's at a gun range. That's what makes yeah. this crazy. Well, the, the reason I bring that up is because like it was now my oh uh, yeah nervous system is firing. I'm getting like that fight or he's flight. He's armed. Yeah we, yeah. we both have guns. I know. And he's like got an AR-15 or a derivative of an AR-15. And, um, and we're shooting next to each other. And we're like visibly angry. At each yeah, other. Yeah, it's pretty wild. What would have been smart is to probably just like go to a different, they have like 150 and 25 yard. I would have been smart, but I was like, no, you're it's it's more it's stupid because it's it was a I want to say maybe it's an ego thing, but it's like it's a you are not I'm right. Yeah. You're not bullying me off of this. Yeah, you're not telling me to go away. Yeah, you know. That's just got to be careful in, in, in those situations. Yeah. So anyways, I had a seal, a Navy seal friend. He was like, Hey, I'll take you shooting. He's a sniper, like what a really good seals. one. And he goes, and I go, Oh yeah. What do you want to do? Go to a gun range. And he goes, no, I'm not going to gun ranges. And then I remembered Chris Kyle and how he, they like go to, he like goes to BLM land or something or to go some, shoot. Yeah. yeah. Because Chris Kyle, you know, you know what I'm saying? Is he, that's how he died. The seal, the famous sniper seal. He died at the gun range. Yeah, he took a he took a marine there, and the marine shot him. Hmm. Oh, before we um, before we even get to the comments, you've seen American Sniper the movie, right? I don't know with Bradley Cooper. I don't know if I have. You should watch it tonight. I know. I watched Sicario, by the way. Um, yeah, and it was fantastic. Yeah. Hey, we I forgot to do Breed of the Week. Or I forgot to bring it up yet. I already okay, have let's one. Let's do it. Okay, and then we'll do the comments. Um. Yeah. Breed of the week. Can yeah. you guess? Yeah. What do you think it is? Great Pyrenees. Ah. Because right. the commenters asked yeah. for it. I'm like, hey, if if I can't think of a better one, I'm not just going to not pick what the, the commenters want. So anyways, you I, want them. I have not prepared them. because I actually didn't know that was. But when yeah. you asked me, I said, well, I know the commenters asked for it. Like two One or people. two, yeah. Might have been the same person. I'm All right, sure. Great Pyrenees. I've trained a quite a few of them. They're, apparently, they're really popular now because people are doing that go by land and hang out because of covid they're like we're doing a farm now pyrenees is a place i guess yeah it's a region okay i think in like northern france france yeah i think that's right anyway mountain mountainous areas but mm -hmm. they're becoming very popular apparently yeah okay so great pyrenees what do they look like they're big white they often they sometimes have black spots they're they're okay flock guarding dogs they look a bit like a big golden retriever that's white right sort of but they have different they some of them have really long legs mm -hmm. like so they're a mix I, i'm actually more prepared for this than i am any we call it off then. <laughs> and even though i kind of crapped on pyrenees yeah which i'm gonna you know there's very when did you do that just a second ago oh, okay. be, be, i here's the thing with them they're not like they're not great at anything they're not, yeah, yeah. they're not great. People buy them for family dogs. Mm -hmm. They're not the best family dog. Like there's some problems with them and they belong on a farm. And so you put them in a house. It's like an Akita in an apartment. Like it's not really great for them, but they're also not great flock guarding dogs. They're not great at their job, but they're okay at both things. If I have a real flock that I really need guarding, I'm not getting a Pyrenees. No, I'm getting a Anatolian or a, maybe in a Tibetan Mastiff or a, um, a, um, you know, a caucus. I'm like, I'm getting a real garter. The Pyrenees, he ain't taking down a wolf. A you couple know how coyotes. people are going to get about what you're saying. They hate it. Yeah. And even the personality. So I've seen Pyrenees. They're all re they're really good dogs. Like good 
Like yeah, nice. nice. Yeah. But they do have a thing where they're almost like Newfies or St. Bernard's where like when they go for something, like they go hard. It's hard to get them out of it. Mm -hmm. And they have that in them. So there's this challenge to them, but it's not quite like those other dogs, but it's in them. And so they're, they're a, I think they're a difficult dog to like pigeonhole mm -hmm. and to say, like, if you have a half-ass farm, mm -hmm. get a Pyrenees. If you're not actually worried about- Who the hell's got a half-ass farm? <laughs> a lot of people now, that's my point. Fake farmers, They're right? buying like like yeah. five acres and like getting some chickens, like, but they lived in New York City or they lived in Los Angeles. Like, get a Pyrenees but because they're going to do that. an okay job. And they'll also just cruise, but they don't just like cruise and then bite people. People love that though. If you're from New York, California, uh, Miami, things like that. If like, if you move out to New Mexico, they love you. They want you to move to Montana. They, they want you to flood into these places. You're kidding, right? I didn't, you said it's so deadpan. <laughs> yeah. It do drives you know, them nuts. Do you know how much the people of these states, and I know we disagree on this a little bit, they hate you Californians and New Yorkans, New Yorkans, New Yorkers. Oh, I can't even talk. Moving into your state, they they hate it more than you hate anything in life. Like you are a nuisance, and you kind of should like I you know. should get that hate. Like you really should. It's like driving to New Mexico. I, I know you my, don't believe it. I got my California plates. I'm like, can I cover these? Yeah. Up? If I did it, which I've thought about doing it, like I would show up and I I would be like, I know I know you guys hate this, but like, well, I'm trying to do the best for my family. Like, I don't want to start. Hate me. I don't care. Yeah. There's a level really of, care. even with like, when I go out to New Mexico and different yeah. places, I might have like a forerunner, but it's lifted and it's kind of aggressive, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's parts of it, rack and all this type of stuff. People just, it, it fits in a bit better. It that's looks true. like it belongs there. Um, yeah. that and you have your California trucks. plates on it. Though. But yeah, that's the only. New Mexico is different though. Or I go different. is a bit more rural. It's not uh, like Albuquerque. I'm okay. going up into the uh, what? Is, what's the mountain called? Rocky Mountains. Um, yeah, Sangre de Cristo, I believe, is the mountain range. But anyways, um, yeah. So anyways, so oh, how much do they weigh, sir? Great Pyrenees. Male, or female. Male. One twenty, one ten to one thirty. Uh, AKC said a hundred and up for males. All right. Probably, I think it might have been like ninety or something for females. I don't know exactly yeah. what it what it was. Um, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, so you're good basically dogs not who aren't, recommending them. You want you want me to um, try to pigeonhole them? Here's my quote for Great Pyrenees for Breed of the Week: Great dogs who aren't or go, good dogs who aren't great at anything. <laughs> that's... They're like good with the kids, but I had someone send me a video of their Great Pyrenees like guarding the stuff in the kid's room and almost attack the mom. And like, I've dealt with some, some difficult situations with them. They, they need land. They need to be sitting outside and looking at something. When you said putting them in an apartment, I thought we just covered like a podcast or two that almost no dog is good in an apartment. No, to a true. lot of, I Little mean, dogs. you said pugs and stuff, yeah. but almost any, especially with the faster, what would you call it? Just like hy not hyperactive, but just a more active dog. Yeah, right? like a Jack Russell or a Siberian Husky boxer like buddy. or something. Yeah, husky. Yeah, the Husky in his apartment. I'm like, oof. Yeah, the apartment living is not for dogs, really. It's and not you, really for people either, it. though. It's not really for people. It's a good point. I'm glad I don't have to live in that apartment anymore. Um, no offense to people that had it, and I know some people like the New York City style apartment stuff, but I like a little bit of space myself. Yeah. Um, so. Let's get into some comments unless you have anything else to say about no. Great Pyrenees. Thank you for the um, the recommendation, by the way. Um, Mark Hoffman says, I watch the podcast while working. Mark Hoffman, making... he comments all the time. Um, Sorry. Uh, no worries. Uh, try this again. I watch the podcast while working or making breakfast, etc. One can watch 18 episodes casually while doing other tasks. He was trying to answer the question we asked the other person who watched all of them. He's kind of answering the yeah, question. Yeah. yeah. We love Mark Hoffman's been commenting for years. That's great. I love the, the ones that have been I know Trevor Hoffman. Denver I trained his dog, Hall of Fame pitcher. Denver outdoors is old school, right? 
Um, oh, that's cool. This one is, uh, I don't know how long he's been doing it, but he's definitely been with the pod for a long time. Uh, Mike Lazier, he's, he tends to comment some pretty good stuff. Uh, don't want to make his ego too big, but yeah. he does say, uh, and this is in regards to some of the people not liking our California way of talking. Oh, he said, Hey guys, ignore the few folk trashing you for their, for your language use. They can use their annoyance as a growth opportunity and managing their own emotional responses. You don't need to be giving that kind of criticism one second or one second's consideration. We get the podcast for free. We, the listeners, viewers are not in a position to complain about content we choose to listen to and pay nothing for. Shout out Mike Lazier. Thank uh, you, Mike. And if you could explain how to say that, if we're way off, let us know. Um, what else we got? I already read that one. Um, Oh, so this is actually not from the pod. This was from your uh, instructional video. I believe it was the one, the yellow one, the target. Remember the target one? What was it called? Uh, it was a yellow thumbnail. Yeah. I forgot what it was called. I don't remember. Anyways, but the person, Sancho Johnson, um, I don't think that's his real name, <laughs> says, uh, you're bringing your energy to the dog, which is pretty controlling too. Sure, not a Caesar or a dog whisperer. You must be emotionless when training animal for best result. That's what he said even, to me? Yeah. Even your comment is filled with emotion. You will only go so far with your dog training unless you up your technique. Joel. Yeah. He must, we should get him on. This guy must know a lot about dog training because he's in the comment section. Yeah. I don't even know what he's saying. I like this. You could read. We could have a whole segment on just hateful comments comments from the haters yeah but oh, yeah it, it's hard it. this what podcast has so many like such overwhelmingly positive stuff yeah it's on the, the normal but, it, but the out of control two million seven million one million five hundred thousand views videos yeah those get the the weirdos oh yeah because it goes it goes to non-dog people yeah. Will you read it just or what do you think he's saying I don't know what he said. What I think is funny is he's saying you'll only go so far with your dog training unless me you, uh, yeah <laughs> unless you up your technique like, I wonder what, what has this guy done? I'd love to see. I tried to yeah. click. There was no videos. I was hoping he, I could learn about dog training from him, but there was yeah. no videos to yeah. watch. Yeah. Well, you know, um, yeah. Uh, and something says Eugene has changed a little, but I get that. Is that the overall feeling of Oregon or I'm in Gresham just outside of Port Portland. It's pretty nice. Yeah. My grandma and my aunt both lived in Gresham surprisingly oh really yeah they went from it's kind of funny because they live um they lived in a town called oceanside in uh san diego and moved to gresham oregon yeah so shout out gresham I've yeah there's there. some nice suburbs of portland i i i i uh, i know people and they like move like apparently lake oswego is like where all the portland, is that how you say that lake oswego yeah they move hmm. like from portland because it's a s show and yeah. then they go to lake oswego and it's like this nice place and i'm like no 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 you guys voted for this like no did, no 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 you stay in portland did you you all voted for this do you know how why are you leaving aggressive? why are you going to why are you going to bend no yeah. no no stay you 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 need to stay there yeah you literally need to stay there do you know how aggressive the homeless population is in oregon Yes. And I've been in Seattle for work for the Pacific Northwest is on a different level, but I had no idea because I did in San Diego, the homeless pop population would never really bother people just walking by. And when I was in Seattle for three years, like on and off just for this work stuff, I couldn't believe it. No. Like, Hey, you, I need money. Give me some money. Like, bro, bro you chill. just reminded me and I don't mean to, yes, you're right. I, we, four years ago, me and my family, we'd take a trip up to Oregon. Usually now I can't, I think I'm going to be shouted down in the streets from Oregon. You're not allowed. Eugenians and Oregonians. And my, my daughter and I were biking on, by the Willamette river where I grew up in this town in Eugene. And we went under the bridge and there was homeless everywhere. And they were looking at us in such a hor. I never, this is like five years. No, it's probably more than five years ago. It was like right when it was turning to this really aggressive homelessness thing, like that 10, you know, this yeah. started, this is recent. And I remember going, what's going on? I've never seen homeless people this aggressive. And they were looking at us and I was like, 
this is seriously, this isn't normal. And I it, like, I was like, this is weird. And it's only gotten worse. And the news stories have only sort of tell us it's getting worse with all the horrible stories. But like everybody there, like, no, no, no. You need to stay. If you, you voted for it. Why are you leaving? Why are you going to Bend? Why are you going to Bend, Oregon to ruin Bend, Oregon? Why are you going to Ohio to Idaho to ruin Idaho? Stay in downtown Portland. You wanted this. You got it. Now deal with it. There's no leaving. You sound like you did in that one dog training video. You asked for this. Bro, this works me up so bad. You voted for this, what you're getting. Don't leave to destroy somebody else's community. You stay. You uh, next question. This is literally what you voted for. I know you didn't think you were voting for this, but how dumb are you to think you're not voting for this? Our next comment comes from it's out. It's dude. Uh, Mr. Dynamite. This is last week. Uh, hands down, the best podcast I've ever had the privilege of listening to. Wow. Uh, muscle emoji, thumbs up, dog, and heart. Um, that's pretty good, huh? Yeah. Uh, that'd be awesome. This one, I don't even remember what it was in regards to plein air. When you get to my age, 74, you won't worry about what kind of clothes other people wear. You stop comparing yourself to other people. It's the gift of age. It's the wisdom of age. Also, if you've studied anything about Buddhism, you know that everybody goes through some kind of suffering, rich or poor. We all go through it to some point of our lives. Remember that the next time you see somebody with more or less than you have. Do you know what she was referring to? It was on our last podcast. It's similar to uh, a comment I saw about um, something about money. When I was like, money doesn't make you happy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually think that's what someone like that. Yeah, they oh, said the same thing. I think it's the same one. person yeah. said like, it was kind of weird. I read it. It was like, money does make you happy. though. Like, yeah. She kind of said that. And then it was long. So I In squirt, it. Uh, 411, 411. That was the one who asked for the Great Pyrenees. So shout out to her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can see a picture, so I'm imagining it's a she. Um, Joanne says, brilliant podcast, totally engaging, and you both come across very well, relaxed, natural. Looking forward to many more. Best wishes from the UK. You haven't crapped on Europe in a few episodes now. Yeah. You, you should apologize next week for that. Yeah. I don't want to, I'll, I'll do a couple non ones, but there's some like really good feedback we got on the last one. We're not going to do that every week, of course. Talk about your deep, dark past or whatever, right? But uh, viewer 9058. Uh, this podcast is so underrated and this episode is specifically good. It's not just for dog owners. It's about life, including dogs. Yeah, um, that's true. Now, law. remember LA Wise or Law Wise or whatever? He was the one who did the binge watching. Of oh, the yeah. Thing. You were just he talking commented. about it. Yeah, yeah. This is him. He says, it took me six days to get through 18. <laughs> that's a lot. Or that's fast. Uh, 18 podcasts. So about three per day or six hours. Wow. I don't know if he listened or watched. Um, I did watch a few other oh. videos in between at the start before I realized how awesome these podcasts were. And then I was hooked. I haven't even read this whole thing. Uh, I like having videos playing while I'm working. So oh, I yeah. often type up stuff for work while listening or completing tasks on my phone with podcasts playing on the computer. I like how the podcast is a conversation without an agenda. So we get both, we get the like, Oh, you should be more organized and you get the people that like the free yeah. flow kind of just being ourselves. We'll just um, be us. You guys are down to earth and aren't out to attack anyone like uh, a lot of other dog trainer podcasts seem to be. I don't know much about, I only know one other podcast and he's right about that. Every podcast is like a winding scenic backcountry road with so many cool things that you stumble upon. It's educational, funny, and relaxed. I have a Kane Corso who has displayed some weird fear, defensive aggression at periods and is terrified of propane tanks and turkey fryer pots. So I watch a ton of videos to try to understand his behavior and work more effectively with him. P.S. I think this timer is hilarious as I had to a watch that had a timer that like that, which would go off every day to LOL PPS, totally not a meth head smiley face. And he's commenting on that the timer, that, timer went off. that you just don't turn off. No, that's so good. Um, that's the guy who watched a bunch, right? Yeah. He's okay. So he watched them all. So then I'm going to help him with the propane thing. Okay. Which is not an easy help. 
I, I trained a, a tiger. No, I didn't. Tr well, I was, I did train it. I was one of the trainers on it. Um, it was terrified of tires. So a uh, car tire, bike tire, um, push cart, anything that had a tire, this tiger would drool incessantly and pace. Hmm. And it was weird because it wasn't just a car. It could be like a little tiny tire that was rolling by. So it was the movement and the shape. And the tiger, we're never getting over. He's never, he never got over it. It was no. just this He's weird, tiger. unfounded fear that this tiger had. So when he mentions propane tanks and turkey fryers, like this is weird and unfounded. Is unfounded the right word? It, Probably. it doesn't make any, it doesn't really make sense, but it doesn't have it's to make sense. It's an irrational fear. Irrational. Yeah. Well, every fear, well, okay. It's odd. So I don't know if I can fix it, but here's what I would do. It's easy to get a propane tank. It may not be easy to get a turkey fryer. You have to do two things. One is desensitization, but I usually am bigger on that with this, but because it's such an odd thing, I just don't know if it's going to work. But what I would do is I would take a propane tank. You could start with like a smaller one if you could find them or something that size. And I would put the single greatest thing, chicken, hot dogs, all around That's it. That's a good idea. And you just... You just, you never stop doing that. The hot dog is, see hot dogs are the solution. to dog Yeah. Training. And you just, and you just put them around it and the dogs are going to come up and you might have to start it far away and start the hot dog one foot. The dog has to go one foot closer to it, even though the propane tanks 50 feet away. I don't know where you start this, but the Pavlovian, you got to force the dog to get closer a little bit yeah. without forcing them. You should never force this dog to do this. And then you just hot it's dog it up. Exposure. I think you like and reinforcement. I think you like um Jordan Peterson for another reason because I think you he is big on exposure and and I know this is very common in uh psychiatric care and psychology and so forth oh. but the idea of when you're overcoming a fear you you can't just avoid the situation that won't help you right I mean you mm. have to address what's happening and it's always through little tiny steps that are, you know, slowly compound until you get more and more. And he has that comment where he says, you don't get, uh, like less fearful, you get like more courageous, like, oh, you know, but, uh, he's very big on this I didn't exposure know to this, whatever's causing you the grief, but starting off at these like crazy small levels until you get, which is what you're basically saying with the hot dog. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to take the propane tank and just like jump out at him like when he's like going around a corner right yeah yeah that'd be the single worst thing you could do <laughs> okay so don't do that now um what was his name so i hope i hope that helps him shout out to la wise for that you um, watch um you watch um 20 some hours of our podcast i will do my best to answer any question you have yeah that is pretty solid uh that's the least i can do i thought uh well we yeah, I mean it's it's a start, right? Uh, I thought Rico for you said, "What a great video! Two friends opening up and discussing everything more. Uh, so real, so unscripted. Thank you both. A lot of good uh, comment. I have to get to this one too. A lot of good comments on the unscripted kind of wild nature, and I think people are liking that more. You'll love this, um, Mindy seventy eight, breed of the week, Joel Beckman. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. Say, that's a top liked comment that had fifty six thumbs up on it. Yeah. and 15 replies and it was hilarious I people know. were like they're like he's six one kind of, 185 yeah, he's kind of feisty yeah no it, it was that was a real um i was thinking because they go breed of the week then someone was like what breed would joel be and i was i was trying to figure out and i was going to write back like what breed and then i i the only thing i thought because you've got to I take attitude and you've got to take size. Mm. And so I was like a boxer, like not that big, but like, yeah. but then I was like, I crapped all over boxers and breed of the week, the week before. So like I couldn't pick myself as a boxer. Yeah. Well, that's probably, that's probably fair. Let me do two more and then we'll, we'll go. Are you getting Mexican food? No, not even Mexican food. Okay. No. Um, so let's, uh, how about this one? This one probably be enough. Yeah. Let's do this one and we'll call it, we'll call it a day since you're not getting Mexican food. Uh, Lisa Pisa says, thank you, Joel, for talking about growing up in a single mom home. I have been so curious what caused you to be such a strong dad, husband, and leader growing up without a father in the home. It seems so rare an outcome. Please, if you have time, 
Talk a little more oh, about what your mentor did and said to impact you and more about what caused you to change that direction All right. in your life. Can we do like a minute on this? Because yeah. I show up late and I make you yeah. late for dinner. It's not a nice True. thing for me very, to do. Very. Right? It's devastating. Okay. Me. So, but I saw this comment and that's what I thought the disconnect might be last week as people going like, oh, he seems like a good dad and blah, blah, blah. Um, my wife says the same thing, by the way. She's like, how are you such a good dad? And you don't, you know, you never had a dad or whatever. And it doesn't seem that like those, they're not mutually exclusive. Am mm -hmm. I using that right? Yeah, having yeah. a dad, not, it doesn't mean you're a great yeah. dad. No, not having it like being you a can dad learn both ways. Yeah. 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 You can be a great dad both ways. They're, the dads are always an example. I'm not. A, yeah. I guess you got a better shot at being a good dad if you had a good dad. No, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I I mean, I guess. I, I think, think it's like everyone is an example, some good, some bad. Yeah, that's but, true. But having a, you know, having, I know like even Eminem, I know like, uh, I've seen interviews with him and he says like, I could, you know, his dad left him. He's like, I could never imagine leaving my child. Like, yeah, yeah. And he I became like a really good dad because of that. Did he though? Yeah, he's a really good dad. All right. No, he has a great relationship with his daughter and- yeah. He even adopted a another daughter that wasn't his right. biological daughter. All right. It was pretty solid. Right, and then like while we're on the, the rapper topic, um, this is my thought for you on your dad journey is uh, there's a poem, which later kind of became a little bit of a song, but from Tupac, that was uh, um, the rose that grew from the concrete. Oh, that makes sense. That stuff gets me a bit teary eyed when mm. I listen to it. Cause it's like thinking about, the trials right and just being able to be um like you know some people that have unfortunate circumstances turn out to do like amazing things yeah and they become grateful for what they have and and they know like oh yeah well i'm not gonna let this stop me i'm gonna move yeah forward. and there was a lot of comments that were basically saying that we're saying yeah this guy like took took whatever it was and like me be yeah became oh. a good family man and a yeah. good father and people seem to be pretty it's obvious it's hard for you to hide the fact that you're like very devoted to your kids yeah yeah We're and a you late in the and game for that. i i think i have really good kids and you've seen my kids and i think you would agree yeah your kids are surprisingly good for your you being their dad <laughs> yeah so <laughs> let me answer that question real quick yeah i'll t i don't know if you think i'm a good dad why i'm a good dad my wife thinks i'm a good dad my kids think i'm a good dad it's a good start yeah here's what i'll say at 23 years old, I told I talked about last week. You know the, the 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 type of person. This guy gave no shits about my feelings. I was messing up in life. And he he was so hard on me. Mm -hmm. Like you've heard the stories. He yeah. was so hard on me because he cared about me. And yeah. he just did not give a rat's he he was so hard on me that he, he gave just, you the joel beckman treatment yeah yeah he just said he he's like he told me the truth about myself it's kind of like with my little brother like i told him that maybe hard truth in the car we mm -hmm. talked about last week like yeah it's not even like that but it's maybe a little like that like here's the truth bro like this is the truth like you're messed up and like here's how you're messed up and then i'd call him and i'd say oh i did this and he'd go what the hell what's wrong with you and he'd like just give me the right act yeah. not every day but a lot. And then that window, that mirror is put in front of you. And you got to look at the person that you have become. Not even like the, a horrible person, but just your actions, right? And if those that mirror is never put in front of you, mm -hmm. it's it's um it's hard to get better. But you must have you seen know this. something in him that yeah, you he told wanted. The, he, that... A great point. He told the truth. But he, yeah, it's like he had to have displayed or modeled something that you thought was desirable. Yes. Because otherwise you wouldn't have put up with like, no, right. It's like Kobe, Brian, or like, I want to yes. learn from Kobe. Yes. You know, you're not going to ask your dad if he's, uh, or anyone's dad, right. If about basketball and go through all these hoops, if he can't even ball yeah, himself, no, that's right. True. That's true. So this guy had some type of qualities that you yeah. looked at. Like why, why was he such a good guy? Like what? What do you think about him? He was he was one hundred yes. Print he he had principles. He was one hundred percent honest, and he didn't care about my my feelings in any way. 
And he was, was he like, I don't uh, care. Uh, tough dogs who are messing up. Like, I really don't care about their feelings in any way, shape or form. I could care less if, if they're rescued. Maybe I care a little more if they've had trauma. I do care a little more. You have to deal with that. They raised in a nice home. I don't, I don't care in any way about mm -hmm. this dog's happiness. Well, you do, but you don't care that second Great. you want to. Great. I care about their long-term happiness. Yeah. I don't care about, I don't care about their, their, what their. You're not going to pander. Yeah. You yeah. want to, um, but also you think you're saying, what you're saying is basically you got to go through the fire, right? Yes. That's a good point. I mean, if to get out the other side, if, if yeah, it, it has to be, but I found for myself, I have to see people do something kind of amazing or be super disciplined, get up at four in the morning and do these things and be super dedicated in their profession. Like even my, my employer, not my employer, my boss is on the ball, man. I mean, all the time. And that is much more inspiring and makes me want to be a better employee than yeah. any guy who gives you the Harvard Business Review BS, yeah, yeah, the yeah. bottom of the hierarchy you're talking about, the yeah. talking. Yeah. Just, oh, I read this book and did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this guy's like, no, experience, which is yeah. your MO, you know? Yeah. So that's a good answer. Mine? Yeah. Oh, good. I mean, we could spend a whole podcast on it. We won't. Yeah, we, won't. we could. Never um, again. Yeah. No, that was, that was, uh, that was good, man. That was good. So, All right. Thanks for um, making me late to dinner. I'm Appreciate so you. sorry. My apology of the week is sorry, to Eric. My phone messed. It doesn't matter. No one gives. No one cares. No one cares about your excuses. That's I wonder true. what your mentor would th think about your excuses. Yeah, dude. Being late. My he said. Um, he said. Um, he goes. I was late to meet him once, and he goes. He looks at me. Goes. Is my time less valuable than your time? And I'm like, no. And he's like. Yeah. like well that's what you just said to me by showing a plate that your time is more valuable than my time and he, i was like bro i was five minutes late you. <laughs> chill he I, didn't, I didn't say that to him because i would never say that to him spelled out pwn yeah and he's like the only thing in life like if you've ever heard me say the only thing that runs out is is time like it's the most valuable mm -hmm. thing yeah that's why you shouldn't be late especially if he's helping you to be yes. a better person great point um, and so the only thing I would like to, you know, shout out to Bosco, your original, um, the original dog training dog, because Bosco probably, if he was here right now in the podcast, he wouldn't have fallen asleep on the job. Like Prince. He's not on the job. He worked, he worked all day. Did he work. Okay. So he's good. All yeah. Right. Yeah. You'll let him slide. Yeah. Okay. That's he's fine. out. Love you guys. See you guys.